We should just erase this bit of the interview. It's going to destroy our career. This record is called Let's Dance. They've made it quite difficult to read, which I think is what was part of the plan, uh, by a guy called David Bowie, who's a good friend of ours. Um, I think this is my favorite David Bowie record. And controversially, the only one I really like. But don't tell David I said that. And obviously this was produced by Noah Rogers, who, who does, I mean, everything he touched was amazing. Everything he touched. <laughs> that sounded a bit weird. We got into the old Sheik stuff a few years ago. Uh, I think before, before um, when we did Antidotes in Before, then none of us really listened to disco at all, and, and I, I thought it was a bit of a dirty word. It, it used to be considered a bit of a dirty word. I know it's had its renaissance right now, but, um, and then I remember Yanis came home from some charity shop in Oxford, weird thing like, what's it called, Le Freak or something, yeah. on 12 inch. And I was just, I probably made this face, I was like, really? Oh, no. And then, you know, it turned out that I was a complete dick and totally wrong. I can't really listen to that much disco music because it starts to, I don't know. A lot of it is awful. But there's elements like the rhythm, the rhythms and like the, like the way Nile Rogers plays guitar is kind of amazing. Like, you, can, you know, on the new Daft Punk thing, you can hear it. <laughs> I've never is, heard that one. <laughs> How's it go? This is um, Nirvana, smells like teen spirit. <clears throat> Which is a fairly big record. Jimmy's thoughts. Um, I liked this when I was younger, <laughs> as did pretty much everybody, I think. Uh, it was, uh, I like the way, this is basically this, this destroyed poodle rock. Like, Californian hair metal poodle whittling guitars, so it's a very important record for that. It's basically, it's like a, I don't know, a warhead of good music. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's Nirvana, isn't it? I think they influence basically everybody in our generation. Uh, here's another band from the memory days, uh, <laughs> Stone Roses. <laughs> who are a tiny bit before our time, but um, when I was a teenager, I idolized them, like pretty much a lot of uh, miserable young men <laughs> in the UK. Um, and I like the second record as much as the first record, which is a bit unusual. Produced by Peter Hook, I didn't know that. We've been watching some pretty good um, uh, Stone Roses interviews. They're quite good. They're quite difficult interviewees, I think. They just sort of respond in like one word <coughs> answers. So they're like, the interviewer is just like, so like, how do you feel about, you know, finally getting some success? And they're like, yes, all right. <laughs> and they got away with it because the music was so amazing. They're one of those, the, the, the few bands to match the kind of like attitude problem with the music. I guess Oasis did it as well for a short period of time. Yeah. And a lot of people nowadays, like us for example, will, will watch the interviews and be like, wow, I wish, I wish we could do that. But it would be so out of place. I think they were headlining Coachella and no one had heard of them. Like in America, I mean, they were like, who the fuck are the Stone Roses? And you know, they just all stood there and then just left. So there was just no one watching the headliner. It must be tough when you're like, you're thought of as one of the, you know, as a great band, like, you know, like a heritage act or whatever. And then, you know, someone's like, you've got no money. You probably feel like, man, like you see all these little kids running around, like ripping off your music, making loads of money. And then like someone's like, oh, do you want a million dollars to yeah. play to a load of hipsters? Yeah. You'd just be like, fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So <laughs> this is weird. I don't think I've ever heard this album. I don't think I've ever heard of this album. This is a Talking Heads album. Oh, yeah, it's got Radiohead on it. Oh, no, I did know that. Yeah. I think, I, yeah. You know, I knew that. No, I hadn't really added that That's really up in my head. Funny and quite challenging to look at right now. It's when you flip ah. it <laughs> That's embarrassing. Yeah, um, I've never heard this album or the song called Radiohead, but um, that is where they got their name from. And I still think it's a terrible band name. But yes. Well, anyway, Talking Heads are one of those bands that we do all agree on. Everyone loves Talking Heads, apart from this album. But um, <laughs> Re <laughs> yeah. Remain in Light is, is probably one of our favorite albums. That may be their favorite album together as a band, and it was a huge influence. I think it's a big influence on all bands because it's just a, it's an amazing piece of music. All right, ready for the floor. Cool. Great. Uh, Hot Shit, ready for the floor. 
<laughs> I, I, I DJ'd this tune quite a lot back in the day. I'm sure a lot of people did. Yeah, uh, Hot Chip, they're just one of those bands. Every time they release an album, it takes me a little while to get my head around it because it's always weird. All their tunes just have this kind of unsettling element. And then usually like six months later, I realize that it's just another work of pop genius. It always changes. It's always like every time I see them, they're doing different things. Um, some really inspiring music in the background. Yeah. Hot Chip, they're just, you know, they're just constantly doing amazing things. <laughs> yeah, Hot Chip. Das ist irgendwie okay, weil dann werde ich auch bescheinigt oder so. Das ist so und ich würde es sogar verstehen. Durch meinen, durch meinen Jahrgang ist... Äh Als über so einen Typen wie, wie ich es bin, also kaputt lachen, ist da vielleicht nicht so unbedingt bei mir die Sache. Sondern